Hello, BookTube. I have a tag for you, a little belatedly. Sorry about the late night lighting. Uh, but it's Tuesday, and that's a day for tags. It's a rare occasion when I get tagged on BookTube because I'm a leper, an outcast, a pariah. Uh, but Big Al Does BookTube tagged me in an original tag that uh, I really like, and also, unbeknownst to him, and certainly unplanned by me, I really need it, too. It's a very positive tag at, on a day that has been just eight different kinds of crappy. So I, I wanted to make time uh, before I shut off everything and just give up for the day. I thought I, I would make time to do a tag, since I don't get tagged that often. Uh, and it's the what are you known for tag. Uh, I want to point out that my naming services, not just for books, but for tags, are available free 24 hours a day. Uh, but the What Are You Known For tag deals all about uh, perception. And the prompts are wonderful. Uh, question number one uh, is, what do you want your channel to be known for? Uh, and the, here, considering the kind of day, I've had just, for those of you who haven't watched the one other video that I made today, I've had just, a, just an epically awful day. Just everything that could be bad about the day has been bad. Almost everything. Certainly a gigantic mosquito horde of little things. Uh, uh, so naturally, when I read this first prompt, I'm tempted to self-pity, or some equivalent thereof, the, the incredibly ugly emotion of self-pity. Because what, what do I want my channel to be known for? I would like it to be known for... In a way, it's almost that, it, it, that it's not my place to say what I want it to be known for, because it's out there in the world, and other people will make what they want of it. Uh, I would like it to be known as a friendly place, uh, a fun place, a generous place, most especially not a snobbish place. But I know already that that's fruitless. I know there are people who watch this channel or hate watch it, which is not the same thing as you're not seeing. When you, when you hate watch something, you're not actually seeing what's in front of you. Uh, but I know there are people who do that who think that I'm the soul and personification of snobbery, that I'm unbelievably condescending. I've had people call me that. I've had people call me rotten four-letter words on Christmas Day. Uh, and continue to watch the channel, and they are hate-watching it. So they aren't hearing what I'm saying right now. They're waiting for certain ping words to ping certain emotions, that they aren't, they aren't paying any attention to what they're seeing. Uh, so saying that I would like this to be a place that is warm and opening, full of good-natured uh, mockery and fun poking and whatnot, and absolutely free of judgment or condescension, well, that's what I would like. But people see what they want to see. I, 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 it's only in the context of BookTube. In my entire life, all 28 years of my entire life, BookTube is the only place where I have had people call me snobby or condescending. I've had literary people in my life for a long, long time. And a lot of those literary people were either ambivalent towards me, as is the nature of things in human life, or didn't like me. And even they would not, they would have picked other words, but they would have said, you know, drunk off their asses at a bar in Ames, if, you, if someone had said, hey, that, that guy that you hate, isn't he condescending? They'd have looked up, blearily, slurred their words and said, I hate his guts, but he's not condescending. It's only on BookTube, and that is only because social media allows you to see what you want to see. So what I want my channel to be known for, uh, fun. Interest, variety, but what it is known for, I, I don't know. That would be for other people to decide. Uh, then question number two is what content will people find on your channel? Uh, and on this channel, you will find a whole bunch of staples. Uh, book hall, Mail halls, for instance. Uh, they started out slow, and then on this channel they grew because I suddenly realized it, every, I had every grumpy old man's dream, which is that I could share my mail with strangers. <laughs> And at the time, pre pre pandemic, I was getting tons and tons of uh, review copies in the mail. I still do get lots of review copies in the mail, but nowhere near like what I did once upon a time. And that that became a staple of the channels, just to do mail hauls. I still do mail. I did one today, but they're they're more modest. Uh, post pandemic, that's true across the board. Even the the big three newspapers in America still get a fraction of what they once did. Uh, but also you'll find other things. Tags, for instance. I have done a huge amount of tags. Uh, starter kits, where I, I will give a, 
pick some subject and give you a rudimentary list of books to start with if you're looking to read up on that subject. I love the interactive nature of BookTube, despite the fact that I'm a pariah. There are some channels that like me, some other BookTubers who like me. And the interactivity there, I love. Doing response videos, if somebody floats a you know a dumb idea or something like that, or a good idea, uh, if somebody gives a challenge of some kind, has an event that I want to champion, a, a channel that I want to sing the praises of, something like that, you'll find a lot of that on here. Uh, you will find uh, my little dog, Frida. She's right next to me right now, but only because it's a miserable day. Uh, and so there's no reason for her to be up on her uh, on her seat. Do you want to go up there so I can see you, baby? No? No? Oh, goodness. No. She's also not feeling good, so... Uh, so no, she's not going to go up there. But you, she, she is also a feature on this channel, as my girls were before her. Uh, lots and lots of book talk is what you'll find on this channel. Lots and lots of book talk with lots and lots of variety. Uh, all kinds of books enthuse me, or infuriate me, or both. All kinds do. So you'll find a lot of variety on this channel. A lot of bookish stuff. Uh, baby, baby, that's not going to work. <laughs> Hang on just a second. You can't see her, but she's definitely a present on this channel. There we go. Okay, that's much better. Uh, let's see here. Question number three. What is the most represented genre of books on this channel? I think it's going to be the same. Uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but the same as the most represented genre at the end of every reading year for the whole length of time, the whole number of decades that I've been keeping any kind of track, which would be fiction. Which seems a little odd and a little counterintuitive since I love nonfiction. I prefer it to fiction by a wide margin. But there's simply more fiction out in circulation. There's more fiction that comes my way. The general interest book market in the United States, which is my primary bailiwick for all my reading, is hugely saturated in fiction. Uh, so it would probably be fiction, even though this is not, you know, a fiction cheerleading channel. Uh, then, uh, let's see here. Question number four is, what book are you known for championing? Uh, I don't think there's any one one book. I Lord knows I have lots and lots of favorites. I mean, one book might be Meg by Steve Alton about a, a giant prehistoric killer shark. But, uh, but this is very much not the kind of channel that I think this question is more tailored for. The kind of channel where uh, you you tune in and sure, there might be a mail haul video or you know a tour of a shelf of collectibles, but most of the book talk is going to be about Stephen King or Malazan Book of the Fallen or George R. R. Martin. And it's mostly going to be that. I mean, by a huge margin. I watch a lot of those channels. I like a lot of those channels. I could not do that. I, I could not... I could not restrict myself to one genre, much less to one small group of authors. I watch a couple of booktube channels that only the, the booktuber only reads grim dark fantasy, not even fantasy, just grim dark fantasy. I can't imagine that. Uh, so you you won't find any kind of isolated championing like that on this channel. I don't think. Uh, again, a lot of this is about perception. So I'd, I'd be almost curious. I'm almost. I'd almost be curious to turn all these questions around on you about this channel. So not in addition to having you answer these questions yourself, I'd be almost curious to know what other people would say the answers to these things are. I'm not sure I'd be in a position to know. Uh, and question number five is, what author is regularly featured on your channel? Again, uh, there are going to be channels that can answer this immediately. Tolkien, Brandon Sanderson, Stephen King. There are going to be channels that can that can do that. That can they, they, this is I have I read plenty of things, but this is really a Brandon Sanderson channel. I'm not like that at all. Uh, there I don't. Uh, first of all, I think that in seven thousand videos over eight years, I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned more authors and more books than any other booktube channel. And a lot of them have been mentioned more than once. I it, we have touched on a lot of books and a lot of subjects over the years on this channel, and plenty of them have been repeated many times. Some of them come up more often than not. But but an author who's regularly featured? No, I, I don't think that. I don't think the question applies. Uh, then question number six is what can people expect in the future? Reveal some exciting plans. <laughs> of course, 
this is not an exciting channel. This is a, a scrofulous old man with small park scars from 1872 nattering on about the things that he's been reading lately. So there aren't any exciting plans. <laughs> I have dreams of things, of course. Uh, I dream of more regular features. One thing that I've, I've fallen in love with in the last couple of years is, do, is reading text aloud. I certainly didn't feel like doing that today. But I, that is something that I, have, that I have come to like very much, and a lot of you seem to enjoy it, so that will certainly continue. I naturally think every year uh, about a few things. A few potential plans. One, uh, uh, one of them I have yet to unveil. Something about about writing for money. Uh, but there's also uh, I would love to have regular guests. A feature where I have a regular guest on the channel every week. Uh, I'm very happy that in 2024, my producer and I in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, managed to make to revive our book chat segment. We don't do it every day anymore. We do it once a week on Fridays, but I'm very happy that that's returned, but also I think about uh, a second channel. Uh, I have, for years, I have contemplated a second channel that deals with book reading technology uh, of all kinds, going back 9,000 years. I, I, I've dreamed of, of having a second channel like that, uh, that I maybe treat a little different than this channel because I would want that channel eventually to be high enough profile so that people, so that manufacturers would be sending me review items. A tech channel, in other words, a bro tech channel. Only one designed for you, instead of whoever the tech bro channels are designed for. I've been watching a ton of them just this week, and I honestly don't know who their audience is. I really don't. They are so unbelievably, eye-wateringly fake. Most of them. So phony so ridiculously in the weeds on specs that literally nobody cares about and they don't read when they're doing it you know a take breakdown of some new device or other they have to mention whether or not it can read whether or not you can read on it especially if it's an e-reader but they don't read themselves so they're not in a position to talk about that i, I thought about it, that a book reading technology channel it's just haven't done it, just haven't done it, but I don't know that, that would be an exciting surprise, a plan of any kind. I plan for the rest of 2024 to be involved in as much BookTube community as BookTube will let me be involved in. Uh, simple truth is that that I am, uh, I, I occupy an ambivalent standing for a lot of BookTubers, including a lot of BookTubers, especially from the UK, who don't know anything about me at all and have never troubled to learn, don't really want to know, but have a whole bunch of settled opinions about me uh, and are perfectly happy to share them at meetups and whatnot. So, just so I, it's, it's, it's an awkward thing. It's, it's a weird shadow self that walks along with me through BookTube. Somebody contacts me and says, hey, I've got an event in the offing and I'd like you to be one of the co-hosts. Alone, of all the potential co-hosts that are being asked, I have to say, have you actually asked around to your other co-hosts to make sure that they don't hate me? <laughs> no one else has to ask that question. I do, because sometimes it has been an issue. Sometimes a host will say, oh, come on. And then they ask around and realize, oh, yeah, so-and-so, I don't know. When she describes your channel, she's not describing your channel. I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, should I talk to her? And I say, you're not going to be able to convince her. She's seeing what she wants to see. So you're not going to be able to convince her what you what we should do instead. No ill will at all is that I should just back out. I'll drop out. We don't make, me, make any kind of a fuss about it. And I will enthusiastically cheerlead the event from the sidelines. It's just, if you're going to want this event to have all the bells and whistles that most events like to have, where the, the hosts are referencing each other, where they're linking to each other's videos, where there's maybe a mid-event or an end-event live stream together, well, that person is not going to do any of that with me. And I agree with you. The, the, the things that this person is describing are not me. I don't know where it comes from, but there's no way it's going to change. And you don't want to ruin that just because I'm involved. So I'll just cheerlead from the sidelines. That has happened. I don't think there are any other booktubers that happens with. Uh, so whatever the reason for that is, that that is uh, that is definitely there. But even so, I still do get invited to, to BookTube events, to co-host BookTube events. And that's fine by me, because I absolutely love them. Uh, and when, when people say, 
whatever the misapprehension is, whether it's that, you know, the people saying, ah, he's so, he's so full of himself, he's so condescending, as if they don't get humor, as if they've never had humor. And actually, we all know the truth is that a lot of them don't get humor and would like to outlaw it. But when people say, oh, you know, he's, he's so condescending, he, he just looks down at people and laughs at their reading choices, it isn't going to matter that you or 10 of you or a thousand of you come forward and say, that is absolutely not true. That is absolutely not true. He has never, ever done that. He mocks people who do that. And it's also not going to matter if you, if you turn to the person and say, could you give me an example of him doing that? Because they see what they want to see. Uh, but even so, even despite that, I do get invited to events, and I'm hoping that will go on all of 2024. I, I will look I look forward enthusiastically to participating in June on the range for instance or rocket summer I hope that I'm that I'm asked to uh, to return as a co-host for gob August I will cheer the event even if I'm not uh, there's March mystery madness going on right now there's uh, no place like Rome a Rome ancient Rome event that where I am a co-host going on right now I'm sure that summer will have uh, the return of book trek I hope that I will be a co-host there. My co-hosts there have largely not changed over the years. They seem pretty inured to me one way or another. I'm hoping for all of that and anything else. Uh, <clears throat> so, but, so that's what I'm hoping the future is. It's just more of the same. We'll, see, we'll just see. Uh, then uh, uh, prompt number seven is tag people and state what you know them for. And this is a little bit tricky because I watch a lot of BookTube. A lot. And so a lot of the people that I watch, I know them for lots of things. And also, some of the people that I watch most enthusiastically, that I watch, I might not even leave a comment because I'm carrying on a running conversation with them in my head or on Voxer. Uh, some of the people that I watch most regularly uh, have also been here. They've been to Hyde Cottage, so it's not, it, it feels very different than watching an, a disembodied face on the screen, an impersonal face on the screen. So, you know, I have a list of people that I want to tag that I would love to see this tag for, but a quick thing of what I know them for, that might be difficult. Like Hannah, Hannah's books has been here. I I go to, I think I know her channel for the same thing that everybody else does, which is how incredibly thoughtful it is, how incredibly deep and nuanced it is, how, uh, uh, <laughs> how it does not engage in Borscht Belt humor. <laughs> this is a very, it, Hannah is a type of critic, a type of reader, a type of thinker about books and about literature that I've known my whole life without ever actually graduating to be one of them. And I, I treasure them. I absolutely do. I think, I think everyone would agree with that, right? Who watches her channel. Then, of course, there's uh, uh, Randy Ray, who's been largely absent from our screens lately because of... Uh, the rotten circumstances, the rotten real-world circumstances that seem to be afflicting so much of BookTube in 2024. It's kind of creepy. 2044, our little corner of BookTube seems cursed. <laughs> uh, uh, but you go to Randy Ray's channel, he's he's uh, happy and outgoing. He's has a quality that I have noticed in a lot of Texans. I, I lived in Texas once upon a time. I spent a lot of time there. And I've noticed something that Texans have a reputation in the rest of the country. Those of you who don't know your, your American regional ideologies, Texans have a reputation in the rest of the country for being loud and brash and uh, maybe a little bit surface, not stupid, but a little bit reactionary. Uh, the, the quip, ages and ages and ages ago, before, before Randy was born, the crip was that Texas, of course, used to be its own country, and boy, oh boy, does it show. <laughs> I've always loved that crip because I think that's largely true. But I've noticed a trait, I noticed a trait decades and decades and decades ago when I was there, that uh, in a lot of Texans that I met, and Randy has that trait in spades, which is that underneath that brash exterior, that happy, outgoing, laughing, joking exterior, that tale-telling uh, myth-making exterior can be real erudition. Randy's read a lot, and he's thought about it a lot, and it's just the 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 Texan attitude that leads people to make false assumptions about whether or not that's true. So I, you'll you'll get depth that maybe you aren't expecting when you go when you go to Randy's channel. Uh, and then there's uh, the other side of the spectrum in terms of regional identities. There's Mark and Richardson Reads. Uh, Vermonters are pretty much the opposite of Texans in that they they are tight-lipped, 
uh, usually people of few words, uh, a very flinty sense of humor. <laughs> it's a sense of humor is definitely there, but it's got an edge to it. It's got an elbow to it that I really enjoy. I really like it. And it has almost died out anywhere else in the country. Um, I notice it in the upper Midwest as well, but maybe it's just something to do with cold latitude. But Mark is a library director. Uh, a, on the surface, again, like Randy Ray, he's a, a gruff guy. On the surface, you might think that you know exactly what you're getting. If you glance at his channel, you might think you know exactly what you're getting. This is going to be one upload in a blue moon and all about Tom Clancy. But just like Randy Ray, Mark has been a, a fiercely individual, idiosyncratic, and extremely attentive reader for a long, long time. It's just the surface. It's just, it's just a bunch of regional traits, just the way people from Boston are inherently sexier. We can't help it. It's just a burden that we bear. That's all. <laughs> and then we, we want to talk about newcomers. There's Joe Spivey, a very young, uh, very needly. <laughs> Joe Spivey is, has a brand new channel. I'll leave links to all these channels down below. He's become uh, embraced. <laughs> He's extremely uh, outspoken and opinionated. And yet, I could say as well that, that, again, even there, the surface is a little bit deceptive. On the surface, you would think that you were dealing with a mid-1980s brat pack literary th bomb thrower. But actually, Joe Spivey does a lot of serious thinking about what about what he's reading. He, it's true that when he's done with that, he tends to dress it in really good quips. But listen to him talk about Lord Byron. You, you, can't, you can't appreciate Lord Byron uh, and be just a bomb thrower. Uh, so you, you could, you could uh, definitely, definitely worth going to see, but it, you could also lump him under maybe it, that appearances are a bit deceiving. Uh, it could be. Then a couple of new channels where I don't know what uh, I know them for because they've just started. Uh, there's Brent Booth Jones and there's two readers it may concern. Uh, two relatively new booktube channels. I could certainly use more subscribers. I bet if they had more subscribers, they'd make more videos. Two uh, well-read, well-spoken, thoughtful young men. Uh, terrific to hear more from them. I know them mainly for those attributes, but I'd love to know more. Uh, then far better known to me would be Bukens and Books, Elizabeth at Bukens and Books. What I know her best for is uh, precision. <laughs> but that's an arid word, That's that, and it's not a big enough word for the kind of thing I'm talking about. When a subject... I mean, I love listening to her talk about what she's reading. The same as any booktuber. I love listening to her talk about what she's reading, maybe where she's gone or what, what, what book she got there. But every once in a while, a subject will come up. Some kind of subject. And I love the way it snags her mind. I love the way when the subject comes up, she is not content to just think about it. She has to tear it to shreds. Just pull it apart, all its working parts, and make molecular models out of every moving part and figure out what they all mean and how they come together. And she won't talk about it until she has thought about it that way. It's incredibly refreshing. It's just wonderful. It doesn't happen always. It's not... I won't say that, you know... It's wrong probably for me to say that her channel is known for that. I know her for that because I love it when she gets that kind of a bee in her bonnet. <laughs> but but I love the, the bookish content anyway. And then there's Shelley Swearingen, uh, who is fun and uh, very appealingly self-deprecating and is the kind of booktuber that I tend to like. The kind of booktuber that I most tend to like is someone who does not have any editorial airs and graces, but is mainly just taking you along for their bookish journey if that's not too pretentious a term, for their, their daily bookish life. Uh, which is not to say that editorial airs and graces are always bad. The example I always come up with here is Olive from a book Olive, whose videos are as polished as polished gets. They are wonderfully smooth. She is extremely professional and also a bit of a perfectionist. And it shows, but not in a fake way. She also is taking you through her reading journey. Uh, and Shelley Schwinge in the same way, it's... You know, the the daytime exasperations definitely show, maybe not to the extent that mine are today in today's videos, but I will, I will try to be more upbeat the next time I turn on a camera. Uh, but the same thing is true with the next channel, 
uh, Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading, who I I absolutely love Our Little Corner of Booktube. And Our Little Corner of Booktube might not uniformly love me, but I love it. Uh, I feel so much embiggened. <laughs> I feel it's a perfectly promulent word. I feel so much bigger as a reader. Having all of these different reading people in my life, periodically making videos telling me about their reading, I feel so much, I feel that's added so much to the plenitude of my own reading life in ways that I could not possibly have guessed in ways that I was actually advised against when I was thinking about making a booktube channel by bookish people that I knew, by editors and critics that I knew. One of them sat in this room over Wine and Calzones and said, it seems like a dumb idea. I mean, wh what are they going to be able to talk to you about? Has any of them read more than you have? And I, I speared him with a sexy look from my smoldering, come-hither 28-year-old eyes and said, when's the last time that you met anyone who's read more than I have. And have you read more than I have? He said, no, I haven't read more than you have. And I said, have we been talking all night about books? He said, oh, don't get clever. <laughs> but it was a good point. He saw my point. It's not a question of how much you read at all. Every reading journey is different. And to me, they're all fascinating. Other than that, who, who would care less whether or not you've read the Venerable Bede? I could care less, uh, except for the, you know all the way to the top of the of the tag here. For all of those people oddly grouped in the UK who think that I do care about that and that I laugh at you if you haven't read the Venerable Bede, and the people who watch this channel are, are hearing stuff like that and saying, "What are you talking about? That is absolutely false." Uh, but uh, I watch. Uh, what my point was, I watch. Uh, a lot of booktube and i love it for that reason uh but kelly at books i'm not reading is the nicest booktuber of them all it's not a contest of course but i think she wins hands down uh you go to her channel when um uh, well there's a pod a little group of things here i mean there's shelly swearingen uh there's gina stanier and there's Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. You go to those channels to feel better about your day. And I hate to put that psychic burden on them. I don't think they that they intend to be, you know, a Dr. Phil for all book two. But it's an air they give off, a warmth, uh, a sincerity that they give off uh, that really, really works. It, it, it'd be the cure for what ails you when you go to one of their channels. It won't be somebody, even when they complain, uh, it, it won't feel that way at all. It will feel very warm and human uh and that's that's what i know uh kelly at books i'm not reading from is is that exactly is, is uh, that and also we i i've been emailing her and dealing with her we've been watching each other's videos forever just for almost the whole time that i've been on booktube uh and then of course we, we i could go on all day i could do this about every booktube channel that i watch we, we can finish up with sarah the bookish knitter which I, I i mentioned her just the other day i made a video dedicated to her uh, wonderful channel. She has also been here at Hyde Cottage. Uh, uh, all about, well, her channel is is largely about romance. Uh, so she has the kind of focus that I described earlier in this tag that I cannot do myself. But she also varies from that focus quite a bit. Uh, the the Aside from the welcoming atmosphere of her channel, I am going to turn on the camera and, and talk with you about what's going on in my day, what's going on with these books, what am I thinking about what I'm reading, what's disappointing me, how my mood has changed. Apart from that, which is what you'll know her channel for. Another thing that I really like about her channel is how uh, non-doctrinaire she is about all aspects of reading. From the type of book that she's reading to, uh, in March, she could make a reading, an elaborate reading plan for the year. If it's not working out, it's fun to make the plan, and it's fun to believe in it, but if it, she's not feeling it in a month, away it goes. No no doctrinaire stuff at all. No no holding to anything because I originally said it. It's a very, and that also applies, as I mentioned in one of her comments just recently, to even the format that she reads in. None of this print only, none of this hardcover only, none of this ebook only, not even, not even one particular e-reader. She's got means of absorbing books all around her, all kinds of things all around her. It's all the same. 
It's what I feel like at the moment. And that can be just what you need to remember that this is not brain surgery. This is, there are, there are no rules here. There is no pressure here. You, you do it the way you want to. And if your mood changes and you've already announced something, then just announce that your mood has changed. And then that, it's very, very human. I think that's one of the elements uh, that unites all of these channels is uh, how human they are. Even Mark Richardson. <laughs> I, this is one of the things that I one of the things that I go to BookTube for. I've been watching a lot of BookTube today uh, to try to jolly myself out of uh, the McGrims that have been gripping the day and just relentlessly. But I thought this tag might also be fun because I, I, it is a way, a, a kind of roundabout way, to celebrate BookTube, and I love that. We should. This thing that we are all doing here, communally, bit by bit, video by video, day by day, uh, does not have a parallel that I know of anywhere else in the world. I certainly know where else in social media. This communal atmosphere here. That there, are, there can be disagreements, there can be falling outs, but, uh, but the channels that I'm watching I feel connected to, and not just because some of them have been here. I, I feel connected to them also because I've we've gone through shared reading experiences for years uh that's wonderful uh and this i think this this tag encourages you to emphasize that since i doubt you're going to pick booktube channels and then say that what they're known for are things that are that irritate you <laughs> i don't think you're going to do that uh, I'll, I'll listen if you do but i don't think you're going to but anyway those are some of the channels i could do this all day i'm going to wrap up this tag for now and uh quit i'm i'm going to wrap up this tag this is my uh, two of two videos today and i'm just going to quit i'm going to pack it in and just read i'm not even going to read uh, electronically uh, because an electronic device could theoretically fail even an e-reader which is simple as simple gets could fail and if it could fail today it will but a printed book it might break apart but if i put 10 of them on the bed they won't 10 of them won't break apart I'll pick some sturdy ones. <laughs> I will guard myself against any more disappointment. So I'll look after my baby bean and then uh, read. Just all night long. Just read until dawn. And just hope for better tomorrow. <laughs> this tag helped a lot. So thank you, Al, for tagging me. Uh, and I tag the, uh, the people that I named. But also, I hope everybody does this. It's, it's fascinating. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. It's gone on way too long. But I'll be back. Thank you, too.